Hi, my name is Simran and I'm a PhD student at Stanford University in Chris Ray's group. Today I'm excited to talk to you about our study to better understand the value of contextual embeddings. The recent development of rich contextual word embeddings, such as Elmo and Bert, has revolutionized NLP, enabling rapid progress on popular benchmarks like glue and seeing widespread industrial use. These embeddings are trained to model the context in which a word appears in a sentence, and although contextual embeddings perform incredibly well, they are highly computationally expensive at both training and inference time, as they generally consist of several layers of transformer modules. For example, when using the BERT base model, extracting the word embeddings for the tokens in a sentence takes on the order of 10 milliseconds on a GPU and requires storing hundreds of megabytes of model parameters and gigabytes of model activations if the embeddings are being fine-tuned. In this work, we focus on the question of when contextual embeddings are worth their cost versus when it's possible to use more efficient word representations without significant degradation in performance. We compare BERT to two types of non-contextual embeddings that are much more computationally and memory efficient. The first type we compare with is GLOVE, which is a classic example of a non-contextual word embedding method. Using GLOVE embeddings requires storing a vector for each word in the vocabulary, which can be relatively expensive for large vocabularies. We also compare with an even simpler baseline, fully random embeddings, in which we simply map each word to a vector of random floating point numbers. These involve no pre-training whatsoever and are extremely efficient to generate and store, for example by only storing the random seed or by using structured random matrices. Note that using randomness to construct efficient word representations has been considered previously, for example in the recent work on self-governing neural networks by Ravi et al. Despite BERT's representational power, we amazingly observed in industry-scale experiments that the much cheaper random and glove embeddings could match the performance of contextual embeddings on a variety of tasks. This observation motivated our study to better understand where contextual embeddings are particularly useful. We present two key contributions which help explain the performance gap between contextual and non-contextual embeddings. We first find that the performance gap decreases as the amount of available task training data increases, meaning that the value of contextual embeddings tends to decrease in data-rich regimes. We further explain the performance gap in terms of the linguistic properties of the NLP task at hand. At a high level, we show that contextual embeddings give large boosts in performance on more complex, ambiguous, and unseen language. I'll dive into each of these two studies in turn. We first show how the gains from using contextual embeddings depends on the amount of task training data available. In these experiments, we compare the downstream performance of the different embedding types as we vary the amount of task data used for training. We consider experiments across a range of 15 NLP tasks, including named entity recognition, sentiment analysis, and natural language understanding tasks. Here we show the results for the Connell 03 named entity recognition task and the Stanford Sentiment Tree Bank sentiment analysis task. We can see in these plots that the gap in performance between the random embeddings in blue and the BERT embeddings shown in orange quickly decreases as we increase the amount of task training data used. We find across our experiments that random embeddings often attain within 5 to 10 percent accuracy of BERT embeddings when the full training data set is used. This suggests that for many tasks, these embeddings could likely match contextual embeddings given sufficient data, which is precisely what we observed in our experiments with industry-scale data on proprietary tasks at a major technology company. In light of our finding, ML practitioners may decide that for certain real-world tasks, the large gain in efficiency from using non-contextual embeddings is worth the added cost of labeling more task training data. In other words, there may, may be settings where it's worthwhile to invest in labeling larger amounts of training data in order to have a more efficient model at inference time, for example, a model using random embeddings. We next investigate how the performance boost from using contextual embeddings depends on the linguistic properties of the task at hand. At a high level, we show that contextual embeddings add more value on complex, ambiguous, and unseen language. We consider language to be structurally complex when the different words in the sentence are very interdependent. We consider language to be ambiguous when the words are used in many different ways in the training data, and we consider language to have a high prevalence of unseen words when the test set contains many words that were not seen or seen very few times during training. We arrived at these properties with inspiration from our initial results on the glue diagnostic task from Sam Bowen's group, on which we noticed that contextual embeddings give large gains over non-contextual embeddings for certain types of linguistic phenomena, while providing no gains or performing worse for other types. This motivated us to further explore the language for which context is helpful. 
To make these properties more concrete, we define specific metrics to measure each property. Let's consider what this looks like for a named entity recognition task, and I'll provide some illustrative examples for each metric. For the complexity metric, we consider the number of tokens spanned by the entity name. For example, Federal Open Market Committee is a four-token entity, and correct classification requires understanding the relationships between the different tokens in the entity name. Note that for each of these metrics, a higher metric value indicates higher difficulty. For the ambiguity metric, we consider the number of different entity labels a word is classified as in the training data. For example, Washington occurs as a location, person, and organization in the training data, so context is important for disambiguating this word at test time. For the unseen metric, we consider the inverse of the number of times a word appeared in the training set, letting 1 over 0 equal infinity. For example, the tokens buddy and groom never occur in the training data, so context is useful to infer the token's meaning at test time. Across all three of these metrics, we hypothesize that contextual embedding should help more on examples with high metric values, corresponding to more difficult language. We validate this hypothesis showing that the performance gap on the Conolo 3 NER task between BERT and random embeddings is larger on validation set examples that are more difficult according to our three metrics. In particular, we rank the validation examples of a task according to each metric value and compare the performance gap on the half of the validation set that is above median difficulty relative to the half that is below median difficulty. At the red line, the performance gap between BERT and random on the difficult half is equal to the gap on the easier half. However, we find on our experiments that in the Connell 3 ner test, the gap in performance is in fact 1.4 to 2x larger on the difficult half relative to the easy half. This demonstrates that contextual embeddings are providing larger boosts over non-contextual embeddings on more challenging language, defined according to our metrics. Note that while NER is a word-level classification task, in our paper we additionally define metrics for sentence classification tasks and show similar results on six popular sentiment analysis tasks. To recap, our studies show that contextual embeddings tend to give large boosts in performance in data-poor regimes and when the task contains more structurally complex, ambiguous, and unseen language. We hope this work inspires future research on better understanding the differences between embedding methods and on designing simple and more efficient models. Thank you.